On this problem, we're going to be taking the first and second derivatives for a square root function. Um, to do so, what we have is we have the square root of x squared plus 9. We're going to need to use the chain rule, written out here, the power rule, and the product rule um, all along the way. To do so, what we need to do is first, I would rewrite our original function, just so I can see it as x squared plus 9 raised to the 1 half power. So in this case, what we have is everything inside the parentheses is a function, and then that's all been raised to an outer function here, the one half. So I would describe um, being raised to the one half as being our outer function, and g of x would be our inner function, the x squared plus nine. So first, to take the first derivative, what we're gonna do is use the chain rule, and we're gonna take the derivative of the outer function, which is basically like an x to the one half power. So taking its derivative, we're going to bring the one half down. This is the power rule, the second one over there on the right hand side, but also in con conjunction with the chain rule. So we want to bring the one half down in front. We're going to reduce that exponent by one, and we're going to copy down everything that was on the inside of that function, the inner function g of x, which in our case is x squared plus nine then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So remember the inner function was the x squared plus nine. So to get its derivative, we're gonna bring the one term at a time, we're gonna focus on the x squared, bring the two down, reduce the exponent by one, and then the derivative of nine is gonna be zero. So we can include a plus zero if we wanted to, but we really don't need to. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. We have one half times x squared plus nine. And then when we have one half minus one, all right, one half minus one, we could maybe strategically think of this as subtracting two over two. So we have that common denominator. This is gonna make negative one half for our new exponent. Okay, and then at the end here, we have two times x raised to the two minus one. That's just x to the first power. And I'm gonna drop off plus zero at the end. Um, we can clean this up just a little bit more if we kind of see, well, we have one half and we have two being multiplied. One half times two is going to make one. And I'm going to go ahead and move our X out in front. So this X that was at the end, I'm going to go ahead and put it in front, just personal preference. Then we still have X squared plus nine raised to the negative one half power. And it's okay to leave this with a negative exponent, nothing wrong with that. Um, you could rewrite it with a positive exponent or maybe you wanna see that radical back uh, involved. In that case, what this would be is you would make it a positive one half by moving it to the denominator and then it would be a square root still over x squared plus nine. Either of these versions would be perfectly appropriate. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna evaluate this at an x value of one. Okay, so we could just plug in to the negative exponent or since we've taken all the trouble to rewrite it with a positive exponent, this would be one over the square root of one squared plus nine or one over, I guess one squared is one plus nine. So we get the square root of 10 in our denominator. If we were asked to rationalize this to not leave a square root in the denominator, you multiply by square root of 10 over square root of 10 so you get square root of 10 over the square root of 100, which is 10. All right, if you're allowed a calculator to do these, um, you could use the negative exponent variety of this just as well. And you would be getting 0 0.3162, et cetera. All right, in this case, because we were taking the first derivative and it, when we plugged in a one, we got a positive value coming out. What that tells us about the graph is this graph is increasing at an x value of one. All right, for our second derivative, what I would probably do is go back to this first version of our first derivative. And we'll take the derivative of that, but you'll notice that we have two things multiplied together. It's x multiplied by that set of parentheses. That's gonna push us towards using the product rule to take the derivative. Within that, we also need to take the, we're gonna need the chain rule and power rule as we go through as well. So. I'm gonna to try to list this out as we do it. I'm gonna visualize the X as being my F function from our definition over here with two functions multiplied together. 
and then the x squared plus nine all raised to the one half power as being our g function. Again, back to the product rule, how it's written out. When I do these, I usually try to take my time and list out, okay, I need f prime times g plus f, when you leave it alone, times g prime. So we'll try to take it one step at a time. All right, so first of all, taking the derivative of f, the derivative of f, well, we're just looking at x is gonna be one multiplied by, we need to copy down g, so that's parentheses x squared plus nine, all raised to the negative one half power, plus, next up we need to copy down f, and in our example, f is just gonna be x, and maybe I should go ahead and mention, I'm using f simply to be x at this point and disregarding the name of the original function. I know that it was also f, um, because my rule is written out with f's and g's, we could have named these something different, but because it's typed up this direction, I am using in this part for our product rule, f is gonna be x from our first derivative and g is gonna be x squared plus nine raised to the negative one half power. All right, so we need the derivative of g, so that's gonna be the chain rule. So we're gonna bring the negative one half down in front. You're gonna copy down the inner function, the x squared plus nine. You're gonna reduce the exponent by one, so negative one half minus one more makes negative three halves. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So the inner function two x, or sorry, x squared plus nine is going to be two x plus zero. Maybe I'll put one more set of parentheses to designate the closing off that set. All right, kind of a messy looking der second derivative. So maybe we can clean this up a little bit. This is gonna be x squared plus nine raised to the negative one half power. The multiplying by one out in front doesn't change much. Um, let me see, we have negative one half times two, and really that's gonna be a two X in that last set of parentheses. So negative one half times two can make a negative out in front of the whole thing. Then we have X times another X at the end here. What that can do for us is that'll give us an X squared. And then the part we haven't dealt with is that set of parentheses, the X squared plus nine raised to the negative three halves power. All right, that's our second derivative. We could rewrite it so you can see all positive um, exponents, but Typically negative exponents are perfectly fine to leave your answers that way. All right, the last thing we'd like to do on this, and I'm just going to use the negative exponents and plug in um, to my calculator, is I'm gonna put one in for each of the X's. So we have one squared plus nine raised to the negative one half power, minus one squared times one squared plus nine raised to the negative three halves power, so really this is 10 to the negative one half power. You can simplify down a little bit if, if that makes it easier to punch it into the calculator. Minus the one squared becomes a one out in front. So I'm gonna drop that off. One squared plus nine, again, makes 10 to the negative three halves power. This shouldn't be too bad to get into our calculator. Um, so I think I got approximately 0 0.2846 dot, dot, dot. All right, the important thing here to note about what this is gonna tell us about our graph though is we plugged a one into our second derivative. It came out being positive. So because it came out being positive, it's gonna mean the graph is concave up at an X value of one. Um, if that had come up to be a negative after we input a one into the second derivative, that would mean it's concave down for that, uh, right at that value of X equals one on our graph. All right, this was kind of an involved problem. I hope it helps you get through this. I hope we could follow along as we went through it. Um, good luck to you.